So in this episode of Decred Fundamentals, we're going to look at governance. Now, governance is almost a swear word in the cryptocurrency space, just purely because most people feel like we've had enough of governance in the real world. And how can governance really help something that is meant to be decentralized and pure, if you like? Um, but what doesn't what most people don't realize is how important it is. And to get good governance has to actually be built from the off. It has to be built from the from the word go. To get to get a governance system in place later on down the road is almost impossible. Now, because this space is like 12, almost 13 years old with Bitcoin turning 13 this year, um, we've seen a lot of things happen. We've seen areas where governance would have been really, really useful. Um, in order to come to a, a decision. So the decision that comes to mind and probably the most prominent point that comes to mind is obviously the, the big block, small block debate where Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash or Bitcoin became split into Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. So we just want to look at why Decred thought about building in governance from the very beginning and why it's important to the system and how by having governance from the very beginning, it actually means that Decred has probably a very, very long future. Um, and it will ultimately head in the direction that is necessary for the space as well. So as thing, as developments start to happen, as things start to, to appear over time or cracks appear over time, it should be a lot easier to deal with those problems in a coherent fashion where you know everyone works together and they actually move forward together. And this is what governance is going to give to this particular project. So let's delve in, let's have a little look at this and um, see what you think. The saying goes, it works until it doesn't. It's at this point that a project requires direction or leadership. The direction can normally be found logically by simple discussion or trial and error. It's only when opinions become stronger that arguments become a prominent factor. When the age, value and participation of a project is low, decision making is normally a very coherent experience where everyone is working in the best interest and growth of the project. The governance at this time can be informal and the direction can be ascertained by what works, what works best after further testing and development has been completed. Informal governance in the cryptocurrency space has its roots in the project's white paper. Here you'll see the overall goals and methodology of the project as well as the overall intended outcomes. Bitcoin has incorporated a method of governance called rough consensus. This is where the project will only upgrade if, 50, if over 51% of the miners upgrade their mining software to the suggested version of the protocol, or the new software version has a dominant hash power. Rough consensus has several proven issues. For instance, what happens if the other 49% don't upgrade? The outcome is referred to as a hard fork or chain split, where the remaining 49% of the miners by default go off and start a new project that reflects the original project in every way to the point of the upgrade. Both chains then become new projects and the project that has the most hash power normally retains the original name and ticker symbol. It's important to realize all holders of the coin now have the same amount in both projects, which initially seems like a good thing for the coin holder. But the security of both projects has now been greatly compromised and attack is more possible. Another caveat to this process is seen as free money printing. The project should have been limited to 21 million coins, but now the coinage is doubled and can infinitely be grown by further unnecessary chain splits in the future. This goes against the maximum supply, hard money, store of value thesis that so many of us in the space value. Rough consensus assumes the most important aspect of the project is the miner and miners have an overwhelming amount of influence over the system. If you hold a lot of coins in a rough consensus system, it's important to know that you have no say in the direction of the project unless you are also a miner with a significant amount of hash power. You can shout as loud as you like, but your opinion will never be heard. In most governance systems, the community is very much overlooked as being insignificant. In rough consensus, every time a major upgrade happens, the community is cut in half. In the real world, every time a mundane decision is made, like where the allocation of your tax money will go, the people are not referred to. 
In these systems, governance refers to the few, and in most cases, these are not the same few that helped build the project in the first place and stayed around through the hard times. It's important to realize that a community is made up of lots of smaller factions, all of which are very much needed. So these could include the core developers who implemented the original design and who are continuing to help make the system better and evolve it over time, the miners who secure the system, the node operators who keep the system up to date and running, other team members or other teams, development teams, who help build use cases for the project and make it more functional, coin holders who put money into the system and help it grow, and then finally the community outreach members who help get the word out, report bugs, and help inform good decision making and awareness for the project. So it's important to realize that Decred built in governance into the system from the very beginning. This was after experiencing the rough end of Bitcoin's rough consensus. So the Decred core team realized that if the space was going to grow, the software would need to be upgraded in a coordinated fashion and as required. The outcome of having to undergo a community fracture for each of these upgrades was just not acceptable. With this in mind, the aim was to make sure that everyone who had skin in the game would have a say. The best way to achieve this goal was to incentivize the community through rewarding governance participation and good behavior. Rather than the full reward for block production going to the miner, the distribution would take into account return on investment and skin in the game. So for instance, 60% goes to the miner to cover their hardware costs, whilst 30% goes to the coin holder for participating in governance by purchasing tickets. And then finally, 10% goes to the Decred Treasury to fund future development and outreach programs. It's understood that there is no perfect form of governance and there will always be a party that doesn't feel fairly represented. But by incentivizing the people who hold the coins to participate in the governance, there is a relatively high expectation that the community will remain together and that the project will head in a suitable direction that innovates on the original design.